Kremlin propaganda is preparing Russians for a long war. State Duma deputy and ardent supporter of the so-called SVO, Alexei Zoravlev, admitted that the Russian army is too weak. He made the corresponding statement on air on the state television channel, Russia One. Zoravlev stated that the Russian armed forces are not capable of advancing quickly in Ukraine, despite the fact that they have an advantage over the Ukrainian armed forces in both manpower and weapons. He also said that the occupation of Donbass alone will take years. Despite the obvious superiority of our armed forces, we are not advancing as quickly as we would like. If we take the same pace, the liberation of Donbass is a matter of not months but years, several years. The Russian deputy said, It is noteworthy that in the first days of the war, the same Russian propaganda claimed that the Russian armed forces would reach the borders of the Donetsk and Luhansk regions in a matter of days. Today, after two and a half years of large-scale military actions, this goal has not been achieved. Moreover, the Russian Federation has lost control over part of its Kursk region. Recently, Russian President Vladimir Putin said that his primary goal in Ukraine was to secure the eastern Donbass region. Since the start of its offensive in February 2022, when it failed to capture the Ukrainian capital Kyiv, Russia has adapted its aims, concentrating instead on trying to conquer eastern Ukraine. While Ukraine's surprise push into Russia's Kursk region last month caught Russian forces off guard, Putin stressed that the move had failed to slow Moscow's advance in occupied Ukraine. This year, Russia gained a similar area in Ukraine, mostly in the Donbass region, after losing tens of thousands of servicemen who were sent to fortified Ukrainian positions. Russian forces are just kilometers away from the town of Pokrovsk, which sits on a strategic highway and serves as a key military hub. The Ukrainians, however, are maneuvering in areas to the north to possibly keep the Russians away from the fortifications they're building or to occupy strategic heights. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken said on Wednesday Israel needs to pursue an enduring strategic success after its recent tactical victories against Hamas, urging it to seek a deal to end the war and bring back dozens of hostages. He spoke to reporters on Wednesday before traveling from Israel to Saudi Arabia on his 11th visit to the region since Hamas' October 7, 2023, attack triggered the war in Gaza. The United States hopes to revive ceasefire efforts after the killing of top Hamas leader Yehya Sinwar in Israeli military operation in Gaza last week. But there's no indication that either of the warring parties have modified their demands since the talks stalled over the summer. Hamas has said its demands have not changed following Sinwar's death. Blinken, who met with Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and other top officials on Tuesday, said he had pressed Israel to allow more humanitarian aid into Gaza and reiterated his warning that the failure to do so could lead to a reduction in U.S. military aid. On October 7, 2023, Hamas-led militants blew holes in Israel's security fence and stormed in, killing some 1,200 people, mostly civilians, and abducting another 250. Israel's offensive in Gaza has killed over 42,000 Palestinians, according to local health authorities, who do not differentiate between militants and civilians. The war has destroyed large areas of Gaza and displaced about 90% of its population of 2.3 million people. The United Nations Conference on Trade and Development said in a report that it could take 350 years for Gaza's battered economy to return to its precarious pre-war level. October 7th a year ago, Israel has achieved most of its strategic objectives when it comes to Gaza, all with the idea of making sure that October 7th could never happen again. In the space of the year, it's managed to dismantle Hamas's military capacity. It's destroyed a bunch of its arsenal. It's eliminated its senior leadership, including most recently Yahya Sinwar. This has come at the cost, the great cost, to Palestinian civilians in Gaza. Now is the time to turn those successes 
into an enduring strategic success. And there are really two things left to do. Get the hostages home and bring the war to an end with an understanding of what will follow. And that's what we've been working on uh, this past day and will continue to work on throughout this trip. We are resolute in our defense of Israel when it comes to attacks it's receiving from Iran, from Iran's proxies. And we stand with Israel and will always stand with Israel in its defense. It's also very important that Israel respond in ways that do not create greater escalation and do not risk spreading the conflict. Uh, I can be very clear on that because I've been clear on that for the last year. We fully reject it. We reject any Israeli reoccupation of Gaza. I said so in Tokyo a year ago. It's been U.S. policy. It will remain U.S. policy.